get his hand out the way. That's next year's vacation plan. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> yeah, a year after. Change the plan. That would be his senior year. He said he's never going with me again, but he didn't do that. <laughs> Actually, he's enjoying it, so he might have changed his mind. But there's so much to visit in this region. Oh, um, actually, what we do, this is very new. But, um, yes, yes, we do a scuba diving. You know, like, you've got um, hiking trails on land. A dinar, just the other side. We'll see it when we come around the corner. They've got an underwater trail. Really? Um, with, um, like, um, explanation panels for the different CV. And that just commemorates when the English did their best <laughs> and only killed one little cat. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. The evil cat, though. Off the next beach um, is where you learn how to sail here. Okay? So you're out on the little octopus, tiny little spot, you're wanting to sail. You're out there. And you're learning the bank. And then when you're 13 years old, you'll be in pairs on the catamarans. And then if you carry on with sailing, you know, you'll be um, you'll be on the F14, you know, the um, and then you'll be you'll be out on the regattas when you're 16 years old. On real sailing. Real, real sports um, um, racing yachts. So that's what you'll see around the side. <laughs> Children here start learning to sail at 10 years old because there's a massive reef there all in the water. There's like two paths into this mountain. Far away. One is by that boat over there and one is by the lighthouse on the other side. I can't stop on the next section. 
tries to enter the bar. She said sailing is part of the uh, regular education here. Do you say so? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So across the way there, that's where we've got the, 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 the underwater uh, around around the cove there, around the reef there. That's where we've got the underwater um um archaeologist. Um no the little trail that we follow. Yeah. When you, when you do the uh, uh. Thank you. 1989. What is uh? Where are you from before? Well, my parents are from Jersey, not the island you said. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born in Plymouth, Jersey, Britain. Oh, she wasn't thinking about. Oh my God. Um. Well, it's a region of France, so yesterday when we drove across the yeah. from about yeah, the from east to west, it's about, the same. it's about the same. Uh, exactly what's the story? I don't quite know, but, um, what's the story with the staircase to nowhere out there? That's the swimming pool. That's diving a board. That's the diving board of the swimming pool. Just covered by water. That's right, yeah. High tide is covered by water. Low tide. That's cool. When the tide's out, it goes way out. It's dangerous to swim, you'd be in the ship. Robert Sirkoff? Sirkoff. He's our last privateer. Last privateer, alright. We're funny. Haha, what's our team? Last week, oh, you see. Shannon, are you going to join? I didn't get to eat lunch. Too busy looking at castle shit. This is an impressive statue here. Bronze. Okay, do people hold up? That means mine. Let me show you this. Can you all see that? Can you all see that world map? Yeah, no. Um, everything in white. On that world map, all those all those lines in white, those were the um, the the voyages of men of St. Malo. Okay, so to begin with, when we're still 13th, 14th centuries, as I said, we're going to be the middlemen between North and South Europe. Okay, we're going to send you down to the um, to the Mediterranean when you're 13 years old, or up into the Baltic. Um, we're going to we're going to bring goods, luxury goods from the south of Europe up to northern Europe, and here it's going to act as the intermediary, okay, between north and south. And remember that you're not paying any import tariffs. So that's how we're going to start to make a few fortunes that way. 
and then for our fishermen, the fishermen were gradually crossing the Atlantic. Um, you remember Eric the Red, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And then they're going to follow the Norwegian whaling fleet to get more or less around here, okay? And then they're going to discover, they're going to land upon Newfoundland. Now, this was pre-Christopher Columbus. Our fishermen didn't really, you know, didn't enter their minds really that they've discovered a new continent. All they're concerned about is fishing. <laughs> and it was great cod fishing back in those centuries. So, um, the fishermen are over in, in Newfoundland um, around about 1470, 1480. Now, if you remember your stories of Marco Polo, the old Silk Road come across here, right? Through present-day Turkey. Um, and goods would enter Europe via Italy, via Venice. So what we would do, even that, we are, we are sure that our young men are going to be able to protect our ships. Because they're trained in the art of fighting as well as Proper fighting, huh? proper street scrappy fighting. None of you jousting with, you know, on horseback. <laughs> no. oh, that's tough. Uh, no, you've got to, you've got to defend your ships from pirates, I would see. So, the Mediterranean's going to be full of pirates. As long as you can protect your ships and you can come into the Mediterranean, you can then pick up all these luxury goods from Asia and you can bring them back through the Mediterranean, around the Atlantic, and up to Northern Europe. And you are going to undercut everybody else. Because if it went over land, we'd have to cross over the top of the Alps, and then go through all the different, all the different cantons of Switzerland, and then through all the Germanic little states. And every time you crossed the border, you'd have to pay a toll. Okay, you'd be paying a tariff to move your goods through somebody else's land. And that's why these spices and silks would end up being so mega, mega expensive by the time they got up to Flanders and the great trading centres of Northern Europe. Peppercorns were worth their weight in gold. Okay? That's what they'd be sold for. So, here in St. Malo, we're going to go down and we're going to do the last leg of the Silk Road by sea. Not so much. Um, and then, the Ottoman Empire takes over presently Turkey and that Silk Road is cut off and so Europeans have to find their way by sea to get to Asia and those are that's then going to be isn't it all these voyages crossing the Atlantic we've already realized that there is another continent here we know that but the point is that in all the calculations by our mathematicians and scientists, our Earth, our globe, couldn't actually be as big as it is, not according to our calculations. The circumference of the globe, European mathematicians have worked out to be about 20% less than it really is. So, even though, I know you all know about Christopher Columbus, but even though Vasco da Gama has come into the Indian Ocean this way five years after Christopher Columbus goes that way so we know that you can do this but it's the long way around okay that takes forever and a day to do that whereas if we still keep going west we're going to get just past this little landmass and China has to be there <laughs> China must be more or less where Utah is <laughs> <laughs> there is a room for a Pacific Ocean there isn't room for it, not according to our calculations. So even though we've got Christopher Columbus, 1492, a generation later, over a generation later, 1534, our guy Jacques Cartier is still going to go west. He kind of missed up your Great Lakes to be away from China. <laughs> Easy mistake to make. <laughs> anyway, so he sails up the St. Lawrence River and he claims all that territory to be French. And that's why um, you have the flags for Quebec still standing here. And Maison de Quebec. Mm. Uh, we have very, very close ties with French people in Canada. In fact, Quebec is one of our sister cities. Okay. Thank you. 
Whereas at the nave, we do St. Marlow on one side, etc. Those of us who live here permanently, um, we've been a little bit outpriced by those who want their holiday homes here. Um, okay. Quite a few British and Parisians have their holiday homes here, um, which is unfortunate. Um, you need where to, we're certainly you need don't, to get one of those handles for your videos. Yeah. Got one. Yeah, when I first moved here 30 years ago, we were still a village of 2,000. Living here permanently. We got about 800. Because I keep cutting it off. And it's about 1,600 on the We are going to have to ban Airbnb. Yeah. Uh, because we've got, it's not even long-term rental. Um, and we're going to have to ban Airbnb. Because investors coming in, buying, the, buying apartments up, and only using them for Airbnb. Mm. Um, which means that our youngsters even, I mean, they can't afford to buy an apartment here anymore, and now they can't even make one. Um, so, and, and it's destroying the city. Yeah, Barcelona's banned it, um, and we're going to have to pay attention. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, we're going to have to pay attention. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's the way of the world. But anyway, um, I'm going to take you um, around the back of the cathedral so that we're back on the main street, so we can get your bearings. And if you don't already know where the best ice cream shops are, I shall let you know. Um, any other questions for me? No? All right, come on. Oh, you're welcome, my pleasure. That was basically exactly what you said. This is the boss one told me not to go back. But it's yeah. 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 I, I said no one could, could, could stop me from getting more ice cream. I took with you. Like, if she said you not to get anything, I would have to But he couldn't tell me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> called the gargoyle. Yes, but it's an alligator with somebody yelling. I thought you just called that. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, oh, what? Yeah, that's cool. Graduation, please. Conclusion. How many calories did you lose? Probably about 50. Okay. No. They will. They will? I thought you were talking about the one that's uh, Yeah. Those are some of Those are. Those are gro those are grotesques. Grotesques? What are you talking about? No, that's a drain pipe. Okay, you're talking about the ones with the very, very A gargoyle is an animal sculpture that drains water. Yes. A grotesque is an animal sculpture that's just there. There. I think like that thing right there. Mira stuff looks like oh yeah, that one. Those are uh, those are grotesques from the look of it. Tails. I'm very surprised I haven't seen it in five years. Well, that one up there might be a gargoyle. It looks like it has a brain, but the others, you know. Um, guys. Hello. I'm gonna hand you back to uh, to Damien. Um, I think actually you might end up just meeting here.
Yeah, they got graffiti on the inside and on the outside. Now. When did y'all go in? That looks like a recent pack. Looks like a haunted house, don't it? Mm-hmm. Great expectations. It looks like a good picture up or huh? Yeah, and it just it just needs a little TLC is all. Oh, I also missed that over there. I got no idea what that is. It's like an old mill, windmill, maybe. We're on our way there. Because we were giving crepes for dinner. And I found out real quick, I hate crepes. It's just a burnt, thin pancake. Gross. I ate like two bites and I couldn't handle them more. So I'm gonna go get some Mickey D's and get full on that shit.